Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. We have a 450XH here. Collision sensor active error. So in this video, I'm going to go through the whole system for collision, lift, what's involved, show you how to diagnose it, and all that other good stuff that you're used to seeing from our videos here at Robotic Mower Services. So this is all going to pertain to the 430s, 450s, 520s, and 550s and whatever other variations of those models that you might have, whether it's high cut, low cut. Um, you know, 415X, 115H all-wheel drives, they're a horse of a different color, and we'll get to them in another video. But we're going to focus on those models right now, the, the 430, 450, 520, and 550. So collision sensor active, sometimes it'll say rear collision. You know, if you have a lift error, you know, it's all going to be... Uh, a lot of the same stuff. So let's get into this here and we'll start by going over what all is included in the system that tells the mower that the mower has been lifted or that there's a collision. All right, in order for the mower to sense that there's a collision or the mower has been lifted, you have to have a part of the mower that is free to move around. And that's what happens here with the body. The chassis, this part right in here, and all that stuff down below that, that all stays in place while the body, whoops, hold on too hard there. The body floats around. You can see how that, that moves around there and that'll go from side to side and front to back and in the front, you can lift that up. And that's what's gonna tell the mower, hey, something's going on by this body moving around. Well, what, what does this body do? How does this body communicate it to the electronics inside? That's where these joysticks come in. If you've ever taken your the body off of your mower, taken it apart to clean it up, then you know on this style mower you have two joysticks at the back and you have two at the front. The two at the front, they are to sense if the mower's been lifted, they move up and down, and they also move side to side, front to back, round and round and round. But their main thing is to sense if the mower's been lifted. So why do they move all around in those other directions? Well, because when the body is attached to the mower, the body's going to move front to back and side to side and round and round because that's how it's gonna sense a collision. So these joysticks have to be able to move with the joysticks in the back, which are the ones that sense a collision in the rear and they wobble just side to side, front to back and all around, but they do not lift. They stay just stationary there. They're a solid, a solid joystick. So they're going to measure a collision in the back. These are going to do lift. And then you also have a circuit board here in the front under this, this nose of your lower chassis. And that's where that magnet and the magnet holder comes into play. That one is underneath the, um, <clears throat> the charging plates in the front of the mower. So the, the plastic piece that holds these in here has a magnet in it and that magnet will move back and forth across this part of the, the upper chassis and there's a circuit board down under there and that's what measures that or tells the mower that hey something's out of place here and if we flip this over you'll see that that's the case with all these other sensors they all have a circuit board on them and they all have a magnet and what happens is that magnet will move past the circuit board and then the mower knows that something is going on there. You can see this, this pin right here. That's part of the sensor. So when this is lifted up, it pulls all that and the magnet slides past this circuit board right here. At the back, you have your, your rear joystick. Again, circuit board right there. There's a magnet. You can barely see it there. It's, that shiny thing in the end of the, the joystick right here. So when the joystick moves, that moves out away from the, the circuit board and tells the mower, hey, something's going on here. And that's the circuit board there in the front that I said about the, um, the uh, magnet in the nose of the mower moves past. Your lift sensor over here on this side has one as well. The only one that doesn't have one out of all the joysticks is the other one in the back here because you don't really need anything for that because it's going to move whenever this one moves and even if something happens to this one where it gets bent and mangled up it's going to be pulling on this one here 
which is going to sense everything. So from the factory, this one here is just a dummy joystick, has no magnet in it. If you go to replace it, it's going to come with a magnet in it, put it in there. Don't worry, you don't have a circuit board. It's the way it's supposed to be. You just need the one with the circuit board and the cable going to it to have a magnet in it and make sure that everything is, is hunky-dory with that one. So that's it there for um, the, the basics of this. You have magnets that are moving past circuit boards. And that's what it's going to tell the mower, hey, something's out of place here, something moved, something shifted. And, you know, depending on how far that goes, how far away that magnet goes from the circuit board is going to indicate to the mower, okay, time to back up, time to turn around, or, oh, I've been lifted up. Now it's time for me to shut down and wait for somebody to come see what's going on. So you follow me here, magnets and circuit boards. No, no black magic, no voodoo, nothing like that. No smoke and mirrors, just simple science. <laughs> magnets and circuit boards. Okay, so we have that. You understand there now when the body's on there, it's going to pull. If this body is pushed on this front corner here, pushed back, then everything. This joystick is going to be pushed back. This joystick's going to be pushed back. This joystick's going to be pushed back. That joystick's going to be pushed back. And that magnet in the front of the mower is also going to go back across that circuit board. Everything is going to move in sync. It's all tied together thanks to the body. So, now we'll move into what could cause uh, a lift error or a collision error with your auto mower. And we'll start with the basic thing. We all know that the body snaps down over top of these four joysticks. So if the body snaps down over them and it doesn't snap down properly over them, you could have a situation where, you know, you ever, you ever have that chair where one leg is shorter than the other and just tilts back and forth and it kind of rocks around? You could get that here. If you have three out of the four uh, joysticks properly installed up into the the rubber pieces on the body you can have that one that wobbles and if it's back here in this corner and it's not installed properly and this corner here has room to wobble every time it wobbles it's going to pull up on this corner same thing if it's the other way around you know it could be pulling up on this corner here if it's not down on this one right also if you have it down on this one and not correctly on this one, it's pushing this one to the side. It could also be pushing that one to the side and causing a rear collision. You could also have it to where it's not fastened down in the front properly and the board uh, back here, or I'm sorry, the board up here in the nose of the mower does not sense that magnet in the magnet holder on the mower and that could give you a collision error. So the easiest thing to do is just make sure that your body of your mower is actually fastened down on the joysticks properly. And we have a video showing how you remove that by snapping that up off there, how you push it back down on, and you wanna hear that pop. So let me let me pull this up off of here and I'll show you exactly what I mean with those uh, snap lock caps under there so everybody's on the same page here. Okay, so underneath the body of the mower, you can see right there, there, up there, kinda of hard to see, up there in that corner. And over here in this corner, you got those four snap lock caps that go down over the ball end of your joysticks. They have to latch up into um, these snap lock caps or this will not seat properly. Now, one thing you got to watch for is that when you do that, you want to make sure that everything is, is equal from one side to the other. So in the back, you want to make sure if you pull up on this side... Then on this side over here, when you check it, it pulls up just as much and no more than what the first side did. If you have one side that pulls up way more than the other, then something's wrong. Same way at the front. Now the front is going to pull up more than, than the back because these joysticks lift up. But you don't want this one to come to here and the other one lift way up because that means that this corner over here was not seated down properly onto the joystick. So now you heard me just put that one on there. You want to listen when you go to put this body on that you hear that, that smooth pop. You'll feel that little snap down on there. And when you do that, you want to hear, 
You want to hear that one time, you don't want to hear that twice. So if you go to lift up on it, you don't want to hear it move and then move again. Because what that means is that your snap lock cap is shot. The ball end of the joystick pushed the whole way through it. And what you can end with there is you push that down on there. It latches on, but if this runs under a tree branch or somebody pushes down on it, trying to make sure that it is down on there, it just pushed down past that now. So because this is pushed up through there, it's pulling the body down on this side, which is again going to raise that joystick up here in this corner. Uh, it's going to cause the body to sit on there crooked, and even if it doesn't throw uh, an error message right away, all it's going to take is for it to go out there and just kind of vibrate across the ground a little bit. And it's already pulling up on this, so it pulls up just a little bit more, and then you're going to get your lift error. Now, you'll be able to tell when you pull this off if you just look through there, and you'll see that that cap is busted open. But you can also tell when you go to lift up on it that you'll get that, you'll get that first little pop, and then you'll get the second one when it comes off. And we made a video showing this on the, um, <laughs> stuck thing didn't want to come off there. Uh, we made a video showing this on the all wheel drives because there was a problem with them for a while where, the, where it was doing that. So that's it with uh, checking the body being properly mounted. Bear with me here, get this lined up. Show you, you want to get everything even around this center part here. And then you want to push down on each corner when you go to put that back on. Hear that pop? Pop. Now they're all four on there. And when I pick up on this corner, this corner over here on the other side shouldn't move way up higher. You know, same way in the front. If I lift up this side, then this side over here should lift up the same amount. I shouldn't be able to lift this one way up. So that's the first thing to check. That's the easiest thing to check. And that's the most common thing that goes wrong. Somebody picks this up the wrong way. It gets jammed under a tree branch or something or you know, whatever the reason, body pops off of uh, one of the joysticks. All right, so I pulled this corner here off. All three of the other ones are snapped down on it, but you can see if I lift up on this, look at all that movement there. And then I come to the other side, the chassis and everything's moving. So you know that this isn't clipped on properly. Now, another way you can tell where your collision is at you say, well, I don't know, I can't tell what I'm feeling for here. You go on the mower's menu screen. You have to go into the mower for this, into the mower's menu. If you have the collision error up, it doesn't matter. If you're on the home screen, if you're in the menu, it doesn't matter. Just hold down the zero button. Quick info. Go to info, select OK, and then you're going to come down to sensors. And this is going to give you all the information for all of your collision and lift sensors. Now this is saying that there's a collision in the rear, which we know that because that was what our original problem was, that we had a collision active, right? Um, this one back here, I showed you that this is snapped up. If I snap that back down, that's not going away. To show you how this works, um, well, actually, before I do that, the reason why that's not going away is because this is our initial error that we're still looking for. And it's more than just the body not being snapped down properly to the joystick. So um, you can see here we have lifted right, lifted left. If I lift up on one of these sides over here, it goes from active no to active yes. See that? And then in the front, that's where your, your uh, magnet is at there in the front of the mower. So collision front, it's saying no. If I push the front, the body front, it's saying yes. If I release that, it goes away, it says no. Push it front, yes. Pull it back, yes. So we know that our front collision sensor board is working okay because we can activate it and we can release it. We know that our Lift sensors, pick up on that, release it. Pick up, release it. Same way with the other side, pick up, yes. Release it, no. So we know everything is working properly. Uh, at the front there, we know that our lift sensors are working, our front collision's working, we still have this rear collision, so that's gonna go back here to the joysticks in the back.
here and here. So the next thing to do is we pop the body off there, make sure that something's not going wrong with the grommet, and make sure that the joystick doesn't have any noticeable damage to it. All right, we pulled the body off of there. We want to check the body out and make sure that our, our snap lock caps, that they're not wobbly and loose, you know, and really flopping around in the, um, the body of the mower. You know, there'll be a little bit of play there. You should be able to spin them around, but you shouldn't be able to just lift up and flop those things up and down really, um, real extensively. You know, you shouldn't see a spot where they're worn into the plastic of the body. And another thing that'll happen sometimes is people will pull this off snap lock cap will pull through stay on the joystick they'll put it back on and you don't realize that it's not up in the body you have to push these into the body from the front and then slide them back it's not going to push up straight up through that if you leave it on the joystick so that's what you want to look for with the snap lock caps in your body everything's good there it's not going to come to your joystick is it nice and straight or is it all wonky and curved up because somebody ran your mower over. You can look at it compared to the other one. You can see that, yep, this one here is good. And also go back in here and you can see that uh, when we go back into our quick info menu, since we have the body off, we have a front collision because we don't have the magnet over top of that circuit board in the nose, right? That's the one that's uh, up here and that, that magnet holder on the nose of our mower. So of course we're gonna have a collision there um, if you pull the body off and that rear collision goes away, then it was something to do with your joystick or the grommet, you know, whether one of these is bent and pulling on the other one or that grommet, that snap lock cap wasn't in place there. Because ours did not go away and we still have a rear collision active with nothing pulling on this, nothing pushing on this, we've got some deeper issues and we can, we can wiggle this thing all around and you can see that it's not it's not doing anything so the next step would be you could pull this joystick out of here you don't have to you don't have to split the chassis you don't have to do that you can pull that up out just to make sure that the magnet didn't fall out of it or anything but if this thing had been working for a while chances are that's not going to happen um pretty much anything you're going to have to fix on this would be involving um splitting the mower open, splitting the chassis open. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and I'll show you what's going on underneath here inside the chassis. Okay, upper chassis off the mower. We know we're focusing on our uh, rear joystick because this mower has a rear collision, or it shows in the quick info menu that it's a, a rear collision. Uh, the menu screen just say collision active. But what you want to look for is to make sure that the magnet is still in the joystick. You can see that nice and shiny there. It's still in there. Our circuit board is there and our ribbon cable is firmly plugged into that circuit board. So everything's good there, but you know, it's still telling us that there's an error. So now what are we gonna do? How are we going to repair this? We're we just gonna order a new joystick, order a new circuit board, maybe order a new ribbon cable, just replace all the parts back there in hopes that that fixes it because we're replacing all the parts. No, there's a better method to narrow this down to figure out what you need and what's going on with this mower. On these mowers, the circuit board here that is back here for your rear joystick, it is the same circuit board that is used up here in the nose of the mower. They're both collision circuit boards. Uh, or they're both for measuring the collisions on these mowers. They have the same plug. This harness here coming back you can see that it's split so that one side of it goes to the front, one side of it goes to the back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do process of elimination here. We're going to pull this holder out of here. We're going to take the ribbon cable out of here. We're going to unplug the ribbon cable up there at the front collision sensor. And we're going to move that back here to this one for the joystick. Now, you got to be careful when you go to plug this in because it'll plug in the opposite way because it's got that little that little leg on there that uh, lines it up with the plug. Sorry, my camera isn't focusing quite right. You can see that little leg sticking out there. So when you go to plug that in, it's going to be over here close to 
this cutout. So you want to make sure you don't pinch these wires down here, cause any damage to your ribbon cable. Swap that into there and take the one that was plugged into here and you're going to plug it into the nose. And again, it's going to be plugged in the opposite way of the one that was in there because it's got that little alignment ear on the side. But there you go. So we swapped them around. The reason why we swapped them around is we know that this board up here, this was working. When we had the body on there, we could move that body back and forth, and this thing would reg register a collision, then would reset and say no collision, and we could keep doing it over and over again. So we knew everything was working properly with our front collision sensor. The one we were having a problem with was back here. So by swapping these wires around, the mower now thinks that the front collision sensor is this. And it's going to think that the rear collision sensor is up here. So when we put this back together, it's still going to say rear collision active because we're not going to have the body over top of this. Not a big deal because what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of this back here is working. So if we put this back together and this says that we don't have a front collision and we move this joystick and it goes past the circuit board and then it says there is a front collision and then we go back to no collision and yes over and over again. We know everything is working fine with this. The circuit board is good. The joystick is good. That's going to leave us with our harness to be the next thing to check. So before we jump ahead there, let's go ahead and set this back down on there and see what we get with our, with our joystick back here. Now that the mower thinks that this is our front collision system that it's, that it's uh, getting the messages from. All right, with our collision sensors switched, we still have rear collision. And remember, it thinks that this board up here is our rear collision sensor now. And it thinks that the front collision sensor is back here. And notice, it says no. No collision in the front. That means that everything with this joystick and that circuit board works fine. And we'll double check that by moving this. If I pull back on this, it should say that yes, there's a front collision now. Yep. And if I let go of it, resets to no. So we've just proved that this joystick is fine. The circuit board underneath it is fine. And we need to move on to testing that ribbon cable now to see where we're running into an issue here that this mower thinks that we constantly have a rear collision when obviously everything was working fine and we don't really have a rear collision. So when you go to test your harness, you have the big end back here that plugs into your HMI board. And then you need to remember which end it was that was plugged into the uh, collision sensor board that was giving you the error. In this case, it was this one, which is easy to tell because remember we had to pull this out of the upper chassis when we went to unplug it. So the nice thing about that is you know exactly uh, where to start because you can flip the plugs around. You have the red on this side. You have the red on this side, so you can start by having your red facing the same direction, your red stripe, and you just go pin by pin from one pin, the outside pin in this, this plug and this connector, to the outside one and your other one here, and you just keep measuring across there each pin one by one, one little strand of ribbon cable at a time. There's only four, so it's nothing real terrible to do. Uh, we measured across there. We did have one that had higher resistance than the other. And sometimes you can even see like physical damage on there on the ribbon cable where it just got crimped too hard. You know, it got bent. Somebody was doing something to it uh, or from the from the factory or maybe where they put one of these wire ties on there. They pulled that too tight and that cut into the wire. But at any rate, we know now that this harness right here, this was the problem. This was the cause of our error, our collision error. You know, how many of you guys would have suspected that? Most people would say joystick, or the body's not snapped on there right, or circuit board under the joystick, right? This is one of the last things that anybody thinks about is one of these harnesses. And that's the whole point of this video here to show you that there is more to it. And if you take the time to diagnose it properly, you can, you know, save yourself a lot of money. So let's get back to our mower here and check out what we got going on after we put the new harness in there and um, go into our quick info menu. All right, here we are in our quick info menu. 
You can see it says front collision is active. It says yes. That is because we have the body off of the mower yet, so there's no magnet over that board. But we knew that board was working fine when we pulled everything apart, so uh, we put the new harness in there. No reason for that not to be working, but we'll check that once we put the body back on. So we'll ignore that, and we'll go down here to our main reason for getting into all this, rear collision. You can see it says no now. Finally, it says we do not have a rear collision. And we can verify that everything is working okay by coming back here to our joystick, and if I pull back on that, it should say, yes, there is a collision. See that? If I let go of it, no. Yes, no. Move that joystick all around, and it will register a collision and reset. That is what we want right there. So now you're probably saying, okay, well, yeah, that's great for a collision, but what about lift? What if I have a problem with my lift sensor? Well, it's the same thing. And I'll show you here again. Let me grab this other upper chassis, and I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, so if you have a, a constant lift active one there, so this is saying that the right one is active all the time, and no matter what you do, it doesn't go away. So you're going to go through the whole process again here like you did. You know, you're going to check out the joystick, make sure everything's physically okay with it. You're going to open up the mower and then check inside to make sure that nothing came unplugged. You know, make sure that these, these connectors are still on there good. If everything's secure there, and everything is working properly. Uh, your, your magnet is moving past the board and all that good stuff. Your board is clamped in fine. Then you can do the same thing we just did. You can unplug the black wire from over here. You can unplug the orange wire from over here and you can swap it around. When you do that, so if you have a collision showing that it's active on the right side, when you flip them around, you should get the collision active on the left then, right? Because that would help, that would flip everything around because you just swapped it. So that would tell you, okay, if I move this harness over here to this one, and now it's saying that this one is bad, well, then there's something wrong with my harness. But if, if I take this one over here that was saying there's no error, and I move it over here, and now all of a sudden it's saying that there's an error there, then I know it's something in this joystick and I need to replace this joystick assembly. So that's the process of elimination there. Um, again, you know, you, you don't want to go spending a lot of money just throwing parts at the mower, hoping that it fix it fixes it. You want to know what's actually going on with it. You want to make sure that you're buying the right parts to do the job because parts are expensive. For anything and everything these days, there's a lot of stuff that's still on back order, so there's no reason for your mower to be held up from doing its job because you're waiting on a part that you don't really need, right? So hopefully you guys were able to follow all that. Uh, I know I covered a lot of stuff there, and I don't make this as clear as it probably could be. Um, but hopefully you understand now how these sensors work, and you're a little bit closer to being able to diagnose the issues that you might have with your uh, 430, 450, 520, or 550 if you have a, a lift error or a collision error and you're not sure what to do. So. Uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video here. I'm just going to throw the body back on this one yet so you can see with the magnet over the nose of the upper chassis that everything is fine and we'll test everything out once again just to show you what we got going on. All right, so body mounted back on the mower. Everything is snapped down into place where it should be. One corner doesn't lift up higher than the other here in the back. Same way with the front. Everything is secure and we go up here to our quick info menu and we no longer have any collisions or anything lifted. And you can see, like I was saying, everything has to work together. So if I push this front, if, if I, actually if I pull back on this, this should activate rear collision and front collision because it's moving both of those sensors, both of the, the magnets for both those sensors at the same time. See that? Front and rear, if I let it go, they both reset. Everything has to work together. Now with your um, lift sensors here, you can get one side lifted and not the other. So we'll do that. There we go. Left is lifted, right is not. Come over to the other side. Right is lifted, left is not. But when you lift up in the middle, at the front here, we get both of them. So everything is working together the way it should. All of our errors are gone. We are good to go. We're ready to turn this one loose and let it do its thing. So again, 
hopefully you were able to follow all this. Um, hopefully you understand all of it. And now you can go out there and you can work on your mower and solve your collision and lift errors. Uh, if you need parts to fix your mower, like the... Um, ribbon cable that we had to replace on this one or maybe a collision sensor or uh, any other component you might need for your automower. You know how to find us www.roboticmowerservices.com If you don't see what you need they're on the website. Plenty of ways on the website to reach out to us or you can just send us an email roboticmowerservices at gmail.com Make sure to include the model and serial number of the mower you're working with so we know what you've got and we can help you find the right parts, get you the right information, whatever it is that you need to help get your mower back up and running as quick as possible. As always, uh, we appreciate your support. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching.